Hi, brothers and sisters. How y'all doing? Um, I got to talk about faith, grace. I know I made that whole video um, where it intertwined faith and works and how they go together uh, in that freedom from sin, how to know if you're truly saved video. But just, I need to make a much smaller version. So faith verse work. So we know there's a verse that says it's by grace we're saved through faith, not a work so that no one can boast. And we also know in James he says it's um, works that justifies not faith only. So people's heads are exploding. What? It must mean two different things. In reality, it's just because people don't understand the definition of the word grace. Okay? So I'm just going to explain. When I was in sin, when I was in horrible, wicked sin, let's say I was the worst sinner in the whole world, nothing I could have done would have get, earned me salvation. I could have fed puppies and orphans for 10 million years and I still would be going to hell. Why? Because on my record, there's sins on my record that aren't washed away. On the record books that are being kept, remember we, there's records on every person, every word will be accounted for, okay? Your little record book in heaven, if you haven't repented from sin and fully trusted in Jesus, your record book is filled with sin. That means the Bible says you're not under grace. You're under wrath. You're storing of wrath. So all those things are held against you. It's your account. Okay? And you could try so hard to do good and follow a law, but no matter what, you still have those things on your account against you. So... Just like if a murderer went into court and the judge said, hey, you murdered someone. And the murderer goes, oh, but I'm really sorry. And I, uh, I fed orphans for 20 years, so that makes up for it, right? And the judge goes, no, you still have murder on your account. You're still a murderer. You're still guilty of murder. It, I'm glad you fed orphans, but that's not going to save you. Your account balance still has the word murder on it. So it's the same with lying. He said no adult, uh, no liar, no or adulterer will ever enter the kingdom of heaven. If your account has lying on it, then no matter how much truth telling you tell, you can't earn your salvation. You see that? So it was God's grace that while we still were sinners, while we had an account filled with sin, and there was nothing we could do about it, and he, there was nothing I could ever do to erase my own account, right? So it was by his grace that he came down and took my place so that his blood was taken and washed my account clean. See that? So my account books in heaven, it's like a rag filled with the blood of Jesus was washed. Washed my account. Now it's sparkly clean. I get a brand new start. The idea that future sins are covered is not in the Bible and that's a blatant lie. That's a seducing spirit. Okay? It doesn't say future sins are covered. It says your account is empty it's wiped clean okay so if I sin again I need to repent again does that make sense that's why I said if you confess your sins he's if you confess your sins then he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness to cleanse you see that it's the same thing when you are truly reborn you're given a white robe okay white and sparkling spiritually if you had spiritual eyes you could see a white beautiful robe okay but before you were in the mud, you were covered in black. Nothing you could ever do would change your black into white. It was his grace that came and gave you a white robe. Only when you gave up the black robe, you repented. Does that make sense? You repent from sin and the ways of the world. You turn away and you say, I'm giving it up. I'm giving up the black robe and I'm accepting the white robe. And I'm going to walk holy and pure. I'm going to walk in obedience to God. Okay? If you start walking in obedience, but then you go right back to the mud to sit in the mud, your robe now is covered in spots. That's why Jesus said, I'm coming back for a pure and spotless bride without blemish or wrinkle. That's why he says in, I think, Revelation 3, he says, get washed. Wash your robes. you got to wash them. They're covered in spots because of sin. He says, repent. Wash your robes. So this is the misunderstanding. It is by grace that we're saved, but as Titus says, 
His grace is what enables us to live a holy life. His grace giving us the brand new robe, something we could have never earned. Now we go out and we follow him and obey him and live a holy life because his grace enabled me to live a holy life. You see the difference? It's not a works-based salvation to say that you're giving up the black robe. That's not works-based. That's the gospel. When they said, Peter, what do we do? In Acts 2.38, how do we get saved? He says, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin. Then you'll receive the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, I hope that that clears things up. Did that make sense? I hope so. I wanted to make it real short. That's the difference between work salvation is trying to clean your black robe yourself. That's never going to work. Okay? You need his grace. We're saved by grace through faith. And that grace, as Titus says, enables us to live a holy life. Okay? We can't go back to sin. We've got to repent of sin. 1 John 3, 9 says, All who are born of God will not continue in sin. They can't. God's seed remains in him, so they won't continue in sin. Hebrews 10, 26 says, If you continue in deliberate sin after receiving the knowledge of the truth, after getting that white robe, if you continue in deliberate sin, he said there's no longer any sacrifice that will cover your sin only acceptation of God's judgment and raging fire that consumes the enemy of God. And it tells later, because you treated the blood of the covenant which made you holy, gave you that white robe, as if it were common and unholy, disdaining the cross of Christ. That's what scripture says. Um, the idea that we don't have to obey, we don't have to repent, that's what the Bible described when it said in Jude that in the last days there's going to be those that come in saying God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. That's in Jude. He said, those people are for destruction. Those false teachers saying God's grace enables you to live an immoral life. Jude says very clearly, that person is headed for hellfire destruction. <laughs> Don't believe them. You can't live an immoral life. You can't. I just heard a pastor say that you could literally live like an unbeliever and still be in Christ. That is so opposite of what the Bible says. It says, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you say you love God, but you're in disobedience, you're a liar. If you're in sin, you're a liar. First John is all about that, the whole book. Read that book. It's amazing. Um, James talks about it too. Peter talks about it too. <laughs> it's the whole Bible. Um, don't throw out all of Scripture just based on that one little verse you heard. And you keep repeating, it's by grace I'm saved. Yes, you're, the grace enables you to live a godly life. I hope that makes sense. God bless you guys. <laughs>